Hello students, welcome to the lecture on staffing and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Explain the concept of staffing, discuss the system approach, understand the manpower planning, discuss the job design, explain the external recruitment, discuss the training and development, explain performance appraisal. Let's talk briefly about the introduction of staffing. Staffing involves filling and keeping filled the positions in the organization structure. Staffing is a process through which competent employees are recruited, selected, properly trained, effectively developed, suitably rewarded and their combined efforts are harmoniously integrated and directed towards achieving the desired results, objectives of the business enterprise. Let's, let us now talk about the concept of staffing. Staffing usually refers to the process of recruiting, hiring, orienting, retaining and firing employees. A staffing company deals with the background checks and testing of employees, taking a commission of the wages earned by workers they send to the outside companies. Customized assessment. Concept staffing can offer customized assessment including dexterity, hand and eye coordination, general aptitude, color blindness, data entry and typing test tailored to suit companies particular requirements according to the expectation of the job. Nature of staffing function. Staffing function of management involves the following characteristics. It is an integral part of management process. It is concerned with human resources of an organization. It is separate from physical factors because it is difficult and tactful function. It is concerned with the maximum utilization of human resources such as direction, coordinate and control. Staffing is an important managerial function. Staffing is a pervasive activity. Staffing is a continuous activity. The basis of staffing function is efficient management of personals. Staffing helps in placing right men at the right job. Staffing is performed by all managers depending upon the nature of business, size of the company, qualifications and skills of managers, etc. Keys to a successful staffing system. The staffing model we designed should reflect the nuisances of our industries and our organization. A few guidelines and basic criteria are built our staffing, system upon objective, performed based criteria, create job profiles around measurable criteria related to ideal performance behaviors, benchmark job performance using our company's standards as well as standards of the top performers in the marketplace, eliminate bias from decision making, use a structured interview process, plan the content and method of candidate evaluation to ensure equal treatment. Focus on a candidate's past job performance, not personality. Elicit information that compares candidates against performance-based criteria. Seek examples of specific behaviors that are deemed critical for success. Develop a staffing plan. Plan staffing requirements based on our strategic or business plan. Hire proactively based on planned needs and expected attrition. Maximize our organization's existing resources. Determine the gaps in current resources and develop strategies to fill them. Benefits of a staffing system. The success of any organization depends upon choosing the right people for our team. A well-designed staffing system significantly increases our odds of hiring the right people, creates consistency in hiring decisions throughout the organization supports management development, helps to improve benchmarking through the organization, reduces costs of the hiring process, limits liability, need and importance of staffing. The success of business depends upon the greater extent on the right selection, training and development of the staff. The need and importance in management and effects the cost of production are facilitating discovery of competent staff, ensuring maximum productivity, developing personnel for shouldering great responsibilities, meeting future requirements of talented person, job satisfaction due to proper placement, 
maximum utilization workforce, supplying information regarding transfer, promotion, recruitment, death, demotions, etc. Moving on to the next topic, we shall now discuss about system approach. The managerial function of staffing relates to the total management system. Staffing requires an open system approach. It is carried out within the enterprise, which in turn is linked to the external environment. The external environment cannot be ignored either. High technology demands well-trained, well-educated and highly skilled managers. Factors affecting the number and kinds of managers required. The number of managers needed in an enterprise depends not only upon its size, but also upon the complexity of the organization structure, the plans for expansion and the rate of turnover of managerial personnel. The ratio between the number of managers and the number of employees does not follow any law. Students, let's now talk about manpower planning. Manpower planning, which is also called as human resource planning, consists of putting right number of people, right kind of people at the right place, right time, doing the right things for which they are suited for the achievement of goals of the organization. Steps in manpower planning. Analyzing the current manpower inventory. Before a manager makes forecast of future manpower, the current manpower status has to be analyzed. For this, the following things have to be noted. Types of organization, number of departments, number and quantity of such departments, employees in these work units, making future manpower forecasts. The manpower forecasting techniques commonly employed by the organizations are expert forecasts. This includes informal decisions, formal expert surveys and Delphi technique. Trend analysis. Manpower needs can be projected through extrapolation, projecting past trends, indexation, using base year as basis, and statistical analysis, central tendency measure. Workload analysis. It is dependent upon the nature of workload in a department, in a branch, or in a division. Workforce analysis. Whenever production and time period has to be analyzed, due and allowances have to be made for getting net manpower requirements. Other methods. Several mathematical models with the aid of computers are used to forecast manpower needs like budget and planning analysis, regression and new venture analysis, developing employment programs. Once the current inventory is compared with future forecasts, the employment programs can be framed and developed accordingly, which will include recruitment, selection, procedures and placement plans. Design training programs. Training programs depend upon the extent of improvement in technology and advancement to take place. Importance of manpower planning. The importance of manpower planning are keys to managerial functions. The four managerial functions that is planning, organizing, directing and controlling are based upon the manpower. Staffing becomes a key to all managerial functions. Efficient utilization. Efficient management of personals becomes an important function in the industrialization world of today. Motivation. Staffing function not only includes putting right men on right job, but it also comprises of motivational programs, that is incentive plans to be framed for further participation and employment of employees in a concern. Better human relations. Human relations become strong through effective control, clear communication, effective supervision and leadership in a concern. Higher productivity. Higher productivity is a result of minimum wastage of time, money, efforts and energies. This is possible through staffing and its related activities. Performance appraisal, training and development, remuneration. Need of manpower planning. Manpower planning is a two-phased process because manpower planning not only analyzes the current human resources but also makes manpower forecasts and thereby draw employment programs. All the recruitment and selection programs are based on manpower planning. It also helps to reduce the labor cost as excess staff can be identified 
and thereby overstaffing can be avoided. It also helps to identify the available talents in a concern and accordingly training programs can be chalked out to develop those talents. It helps in growth and diversification of business. It helps the organization to realize the importance of manpower management, which ultimately helps in stability of a concern. Let us now talk about the job design. The job design means decide the contents of a job. It fixes the duties and responsibilities of the job, the methods of doing the job and the relationships between the job holder and his superiors, subordinates and colleagues. Importance of job design. Job design is very important function of staffing. If the jobs are designed properly, then highly efficient managers will join the organization. They will be motivated to improve the productivity and profitability of the organization. Factors affecting job design. Proper scope of job. The, the scope of the job should be proper. If the scope is narrow, then the job will not be challenging. Full-time challenge of the job. The job should be so challenging that it takes up the full time and effort of the manager. Managerial skills. The skills of the manager should be considered before designing his job. All managers do not have equal skills. Organizations requirements. Jobs must be designed according to the requirements of the organization. Individual likes and dislikes. People have different likes and dislikes. Some people like to work alone, while some people prefer to work in groups. Some people want to do only planning and decision making, while other people like to implement these plans and decision. Technology. The level of technology used by the organization also affects the job design. Recruitment, selection and training. Recruitment is the process of identifying that the organization needs to employ someone up to the point at which application forms for the post have arrived at the organization. Selection then consists of the processes involved in choosing from applicants a suitable candidate to fill a post. Training consists of a range of processes involved in making sure that job holders have the right skills, knowledge and attitudes required to help the organization to achieve its objectives. What is involved in human resource recruitment? Employees who experience a high turnover of staff pay, a high price in terms of the time and resources spent interviewing and training new employees. Because of this, many organizations have personnel on staffs that are in charge of human resources recruitment in addition to handling human resources needs for existing staff. Recruitment process outsourcing. Recruitment process outsourcing refers to a type of business process outsourcing tailored specifically to human resource management tasks. When hiring new employees, human resource personnel must select and screen candidates, match their skill sets with appropriate positions, interview the prospective employees, and send chosen candidates on for orientation and employment paperwork. Recruitment, by definition, is the process of attracting, screening, and selecting qualified people for a job. A typical recruitment system consists of a database of job seekers on one side and employers using the database to fill their vacancies on the other. Recruitment agencies are always seeking to increase the number of job seekers using their databases. They announced this in their communication campaigns in order to attract more clients, simply because the more the job seekers in the database, the higher the access fees they can get from employers. While agencies attempt to make their databases larger, they also increase the level of noise in the system and reduce the visibility level. Thus, it becomes more difficult for employers to spot real, outstanding job seekers. The situation becomes even more critical when thousands of graduates join the job market each year. Let's examine a practical recruitment case. A typical organization needs to fill a vacancy. They create a job posting and announce it on a recruitment website. The job posting attracts some people from the main job seekers pool. These interested job seekers who decide to apply form a subgroup called the applicants pool. The organization needs to screen the candidates in the applicants pool in order to find the top candidates. 
Looking into the applicant's pool, we find hundreds and sometimes thousands of job seekers competing for the job. To be more precise, we don't see job seekers, we only see their CVs. In competing for a job, many job seekers tend to exaggerate their skills and experience on their CVs. This makes it very difficult to make accurate decisions based on the information provided. Some CVs will shine more than others. However, these CVs do not necessarily represent outstanding applicants. It's even worse knowing that some of the truly brilliant job seekers do not write strong and convincing CVs. With little clue about how to best screen the applicants, recruitment specialists tend to engage in what we call blind screening, where they use irrelevant criteria to filter applicants and reduce them to a more manageable number. Blind screening can take several forms, such as screening strictly for university graduates, screening applicants from a certain industry, or even from a particular geographical area. This blind screening practice is unjust, biased, inefficient, and not at all transparent. It neither brings the best candidates to organizations, nor does it bring the best jobs to the most outstanding job seekers. We believe that screening should consider all relevant aspects in job seekers' profiles, each with proper weight. Role of Selection and Human Resource Management The role of selection is related to its use as a tool for locating and selecting applicants to fill open vacancies in the organization. One of the roles of selection in human resource management is to ensure that the prospective employees meet the stated qualities that have been enumerated in the organization's recruitment policy. Management training. Management training includes courses and workshops that prepare managers to face the wide array of challenges involved in supervising people and managing systems and projects. Some companies provide their own training in the form of workshops or seminars. Others send management personnel to conferences or outside courses. Some companies contract with professional trainers to offer weekly sessions at the workplace on various management and supervisory topics. Now let's talk about external recruitment. External recruitment makes it possible to draw upon a wider range of talent and provides the opportunity to bring new experience and ideas into the business. External recruitment methods. Recruitment methods are the specific means through which potential employees are attracted to the firm. Advertising, a way of communicating the employment needs within the firm to the public through media such as radio, newspaper, television, industry publications and the internet. Employment agencies, an organization that helps firms recruit employees and at the same time aids individuals in their attempt to locate jobs. There are two types of the employment agencies that is public employment agencies, private employment agencies. Recruiters. The most common use of recruiters is with technical and vocational schools, community colleges, colleges and universities. Special events. It is a recruiting method that involves an effort on the part of a single employer or group of employers to attract a large number of applicants for interviews. Internships, a special form of recruiting that involves placing a student in a temporary job. There is no obligation on the part of the company to permanently hire the student and no obligation on the part of the student to accept a permanent position with the firm. Executive search firms. Executive search firms, sometimes called headhunters, are a specialized form of private employment agencies that place top-level executives and experienced professionals. Professional associations. Associations in many business professions such as finance, marketing, information technology, and human resources provide recruitment and placement services for their members. Professional associations and trade organizations provide a valuable service in bringing together professional and professional job openings. Unsolicited walk-in applicants. If an organization has the reputation of being a good place to work, it may be able to attract good prospective employees without extensive recruitment efforts. Open houses. 
Firms pair potential hires and managers in a warm, casual environment that encourages on-the-spot job offers. Event Recruiting Attend the events that the people you are seeking to go to. Virtual Job Fairs Individuals meet recruiters face-to-face -face in interviews conducted over special computers that have lenses that transmit head and shoulder images of both parties. Cyber Recruiting Organizations can also use websites and internet sources to recruit people application, submission test, and interview, and other recruitment and selection activities can be performed online. Job Description A job description will set out how a particular employee will fit into the organization. A simple description of the role and duties of the employee within the organization. A job description could be used as a job indicator for applicants for a job. Induction and training. New workers in a firm are usually given an induction program in which they meet other workers and are shown the skills they must learn. Training thus takes place in the following ways. On the job, learning skills through experience at work. Off the job, learning through attending courses. Now moving on to the next topic, let's talk about training and development. Training involves providing a range of planned activities that enable an employee to develop the skills, attitudes and knowledge required by the organization and the work required. Recruitment. The starting point is to carry out job analysis to identify the sorts of skills, knowledge and essential requirements that someone needs to have to carry out a job. These details can be set out in a job specification, which is passed on to recruiters. It gives them a picture of the ideal candidate. Selection. Selection simply involves choosing the right person for the job. Effective selection requires that the organization makes the right prediction from data available about the various candidates for a post. Training. Training for employment is very important. In a modern economy like our own, the nature of work is constantly changing. New technologies means that new work skills are constantly required. There are basically two types of training. On the job training, employees develop and improve their work skills whilst actually doing the job in question. For example, word processor operators rapidly improve their skills by constant practice. Of the job training, employees will often encourage their employees to develop their skills through off-the-job training courses. For example, a trainee may be allowed to attend a day release course at the local college. Now let's talk about performance appraisal. A performance appraisal is a proceeding in which an employee's performance is reviewed, usually by one or more supervisors. Also known as a performance review or employee review in com companies where performance appraisals are conducted they usually take place on a regular basis, with annual reviews being very common. Performance appraisal is generally done in systematic ways, which are the supervisors measures the pay of employees and compare it with targets and plans. The supervisor analyzes the factors behind work performances of employees. The employers are in position to guide the employees for a better performance. Objectives of performance appraisal Performance appraisal can be done with following objectives. To maintain records in order to develop compensation packages, wage structure, salaries, raises, etc. To identify the strengths and weaknesses of employees to place right men on right job. To maintain and access the potential present in a person for further growth and development. To provide a feedback to employees regarding their performance and related status. To provide a feedback to employees regarding their performance and related status. It serves as a basis for influencing working habits of the employees. To review and retain the promotional and other training programs. Advantages of performance appraisal. The advantages of performance appraisal are promotion. Performance appraisal helps the supervisors to chalk out the promotion programs for efficient employees. Compensation. Performance appraisal helps in chalking out compensation packages for employees. Employees development. 
The systematic procedure of performance appraisal helps the supervisors to frame training policies and programs. It helps to analyze trends and weaknesses of employees so that new jobs can be designed for efficient employees. It also helps in framing future development programs. Selection Validation Performance appraisal helps the supervisors to understand the validity and importance of the selection procedure. Communication For an organization, effective communication between employees and employers is very important. Motivation Performance appraisal serves as a motivation tool. Through evaluating performance of employees, a person's efficiency can be determined if the targets are achieved. Different types of performance appraisal methods. Different types of performance appraisal methods include the management by objectives, graphic, rating scale, and essay. The type of performance appraisal method an organization uses is dependent on its specific needs, organizational structure, and long term objectives. Connection between performance appraisal and performance management. The connection between performance appraisal and performance management is that process appraisals are the most common tool used for performance management. Performance management requires accurate tools to measure and monitor the performance of employees. Performance appraisals allows manager to evaluate performance thoroughly while also providing the employee with goals and objectives to increase future performance. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learnt in this lecture. Recruitment takes place from the point when a business decides that it needs to employ somebody up to the point where a pile of completed application forms has arrived in the post. Attracting the right candidates to apply for a job can be an expensive process. The mechanics of a performance appraisal vary depending on the company. Commonly, one or more supervisors prepare a formal written report which is used in the evaluation. The type of performance appraisal method an organization uses is dependent on its specific needs, organizational structure and long-term objectives. The success of business depends upon the greater extent on the right selection, training and development of the staff.